Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. I've been wanting to make an updated gearing guide for BFA, and now that Season 2 has started and everything got buffed, now is as good a time as any. So in this video, I'll quickly show you all of the different ways that you can gear up in the game now, and give you some tips on how to optimize things. It's quite the list we have. BFA easily has the most ways to gear up compared to other expansions, whether it's from the classic stuff such as dungeons, raids, world bosses, or PvP, or from the newer stuff such as world quests, war fronts, and incursions. There are a lot of options to choose from. So, you just hit 120, and you're asking, what's next? Well, a good place to start is by unlocking world quests, since they're a good source of gear that you can grab solo, and there aren't any eye level requirements in doing them. If you're leveling an alt, and you've already done this on your main character, you should already have them unlocked. Just speak to the main NPC you've been talking to for your war campaign quest. If it's your first character though, you first need to do a bit of questing and complete a little intro quest series for all three of your zones, just until you unlock the foothold located there, and you also need to hit friendly reputation with your main three factions. For the Alliance, that's the Proudmoor Admiralty of Tiragard, the Order of Embers in Drestfar, and the Storm's Wake in Stormsong Valley. And for the Horde, that's the Voldenai in Voldun, Talanji's Expedition in Nazmir, and the Zandalari Empire in Zandalar. You'll usually get this pretty easily just by questing in those zones for a short while. Once unlocked, these world quests give you a variety of things, such as war resources, Azerite for your amulet, and what we're interested in for this video, gear. They do scale with your personal eye level. If you're 300, they'll be 305-ish, and if you're 335, they'll be 340-ish, and so on. The quests themselves scale all the way up to eye level 370. By the way, when you see the plus after the item level, that means that it can proc to a higher level. It's called war forging or titan forging. So, everything I go over in this video is just the base eye level that you can get, but if you get lucky, you can get a 400 or something from even a world quest. There are also special world boss world quests that you get once a week. They have a purple symbol and a dragon portrait, and they give you eye level 355 loot as of this video, so they're not the best, but they are a nice bonus, especially when you're first starting out. Just look in your group finder if there aren't any people attacking on your server, because there's usually one up. There are also emissary quests that you can get daily, and these can also award gear, and depending on your eye level, they skill all the way up to 385, and they can give you other useful things such as order resources or azurite, which you need to level your amulet, so you'll always want to check these daily. Dungeons were also buffed quite a bit. Everything but normal is now harder, but they also give you some pretty good rewards eye level wise. Normal now gives 340s, Heroics 355, and Regular Mythics 370. And as for Mythic Plus, which you can start by getting a keystone from a regular Mythic run, they give the following item levels depending on what level key that you finish. At Mythic level 2, you can get a 375 at the end of the run, and at level 10 you can get a 400, and the highest level key you complete for the week, you get a bonus chest in your main city with an even higher piece of loot. 380 if Mythic 2 was the highest run that you did that week, and 410 if 10 was the highest. From these, you also get a currency called Titan Residuum. This is used for buying specific pieces of Azerite armor from the Thaumaturge Vashreen vendor, located right here for the Alliance, and right here for the Horde in your main cities. The amount that you get also scales with the highest level mythic that you completed that week, and can be used to buy gear of varying eye levels. You can either buy specific pieces at eye level 415, or get a 385, 400, or 415 randomized cache instead. The caches are discounted since you're trading off the ability to target a specific piece. And you also get this residuum from scrapping Azerite armor pieces giving you more the higher eye level that you scrap. You should have been introduced to this machine via a quest in your main city shortly after arriving in BFA. So, put a higher value on Azerite armor rewards especially. Even if you don't need them, you can break them down for something useful later on. Raids are always an option of course, if you prefer them. 
As of this video, there are just two out, and that's Aldir, located right here in the Nazmir zone, and the tougher one, the Battle of Dazer Alor, located right here in Boralus for the Alliance, and Dazer Alor, of course, for the Horde. They haven't changed too much in structure. You have four difficulties, and that's LFR, Normal, Heroic, and Mythic, and here are the eye levels for both raids for each difficulty. Of course, the Battle of Dazer Alor gives better loot, since it's the newest one. Another really good option for gearing up are Warfronts. These are large-scale instance battles that run through four different stages. First is the Alliance controls it, and the Horde gathers resources to launch a war effort, which leads to two, where the Horde can do a scenario to attack the Warfront itself for a high eye level piece per victory, repeatable infinitely, and one really high eye level piece once per event. Stage three is the Horde wins and controls the Warfront, and now the Alliance must gather resources. And four, the Alliance now gets to attack and do the special scenario. At which point, things just cycle over again. You can keep track of all of this at a table at the docks of your main city. There are currently two Warfronts active as this video, with more planned, and that's the battle for Stromgard and the battle for Darkshore. Stromgard was the first one and rewards eye level 340 pieces per victory, and that one time quest to win the scenario gives you a 370. And the battle for Darkshore was released in patch 8.1, and gives you 355 gear with every win, and a 400 from the one time quest. So these are a really good option to gear up quickly if you don't mind grinding the same thing over and over. I personally think that'll burn you out pretty quickly, but it's there. There is a catch though, and that's the fact that you need a certain eye level to queue up for them, so it's not something you'll be able to do straight out the gate of 120. Stromgard requires eye level 320, and for Darkshore you need 335, but once you're able to queue up, you're in pretty good shape. There is another side to these, however. If you control them, you can go to the actual zones, and kill world bosses and rare enemies, and do world quests for even more loot. The Stromgard world boss is Doomhowl for the Alliance, and the Lion's Roar for the Horde, and they drop eye level 370 loot, and are only lootable when your faction controls that warfront. And as for the rares spread throughout the zone, they give you eye level 340 loot. As for Darkshore, the world boss is Ivis, and he drops eye level 400 gear, and the rare mobs drop 355 pieces. As for the turn-ins for the resource gathering portion, these are just trade goods or crafted goods for the most part. These give you Azerite in return, which you need to level up your amulet and unlock more perks for your Azerite armor, so they're pretty important. Probably the lowest effort way to get that Azerite, although also pretty expensive if you can't craft everything yourself. The lockout for all of this stuff is on a per stage basis, meaning that you can only get loot from the world bosses and rares and get the scenario quest once per stage. As for the resource turn-ins, these are on a daily lockout, but they'll require different items each reset. And like I said, the actual scenarios themselves are spammable to your heart's content, as long as you're in the attacking portion. Very powerful for gearing, and you should always keep an eye on how they're progressing and take advantage of them. Next, we have another new feature with 8.1, and those are the incursions. If you played Legion, you may remember these as the old demon assaults. Basically, every 19 hours, one of the six zones spread across Kul Tiris or Zandalar will go under siege by the enemy faction. Special incursion world quests will pop up, and if you enter the zone, you'll get a quest to complete four of them for extra rewards. Again, scaling with your eye level. The highest it goes is eye level 370 loon as of this video. They're pretty quick, and if you have war mode active, they also make for a pretty hectic time. They're about 20 minutes in length for the whole thing if you don't run into any snags, and are a nice quick way to get some good gear. Also doable by characters under level 120 for some quick XP if you have some alts that you're looking to level. And crafting is always a choice of course. Eye levels range quite a bit from 200s to low 400s. I won't go over every piece here, but some materials to keep an eye out for are expulsums, which you can get from a variety of sources. The main one being from salvaging gear and your scrapper. There are also these title cores, which you get from mythic dungeons, sanguicels, which you get from Aldir, and breaths of Bwamsamdi, which you get from the battle of Dazer Alor. The higher difficulty that you run, the more you get. 
PvP in general is also a choice for gearing this expansion, and a pretty good one too. Doing rated game modes, such as Arena or Rated Battlegrounds, at the end of each round, there's a chance that you'll receive a piece of loot with a varying eye level depending on your rated PvP rank. Here's a table. The better you are, the better you're rewarded. So if you're like me and you suck at PvP, you'll mainly just get 370-ish from these. There is also a conquest bar that you can fill up weekly, and once you do, you can go to your PvP headquarters located near your city. Again, there's an icon for it on your map, and you'll get a quest turn in giving you some gear. This gear will scale up over time regardless of ranking. As of this video, we're at week 3, so we get 385s, but at week 10, this will increase to 400. Another bonus is if you fill this up, similar to Mythic Plus, you also get a weekly chest for this. Return to the same PvP headquarters to claim your loot, and even some bonus Azerite. Speaking of Azerite, I feel like I should also have a dedicated section for this. This is the grinding resource for BFA. To put it simply, you gather this to level up your Heart of Azeroth amulet, and this does two things, increase its eye level, and also allows you to pick more traits for your Azerite armor, of which you have three slots for, the shoulders, chest, and head, and you get it from pretty much any activity that you can think of. World quests, dungeons, raid bosses, emissary quests, reputation caches, PvP, just by playing the game pretty much. A big source though are the island expeditions, so let's go over these really quickly. Again, at the docks of your main city, you'll have another icon leading you to a table that lets you queue up for these. Basically, they're short 15-ish minute scenarios where you're pitted against the enemy faction in a mad scramble for Azerite. You kill enemies, save NPCs, mine nodes, and open chests, and whoever gets to a certain amount first, wins. At the end of each round, you can get Azerite, transmogs, mounts, all sorts of stuff. If you click on your table though, you'll notice a progress bar. You can fill this up once per week for a bonus 2500 Azerite, so that's the main reliable reason to do them. You'll also get a treasure map, which unlocks a lucrative mission from your mission table, and this can give you some nice bonuses as well. Artifact power, resources, residuum, gold, and even mounts and such. But I think that's it for the main methods. Like I said, it's a lot to take in. The best advice I can give you is to take it one day at a time. A lot of this stuff will come to you in the form of quests, so don't worry about scrambling around too much. It just happens pretty naturally. There are some odds and ends and various tips I'd like to give you before signing off here though. First is to visit Magni to level up your amulet. One of the new factions is the Champions of Azeroth, which you level by doing world quests mainly. At the Honored, Friendly, and Revered levels, you can visit Magni and Silithus, and he'll upgrade your amulet by 15 eye levels each tier. Note that, if you did this already on your main character, it's free for all of your alts. No rep grinding needed. For Warfronts, I do have an add-on that I'd like to recommend. It's called the Warfront Rare Tracker, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It tracks what rares you have and haven't killed for that cycle, and shows what they drop as far as mounts or pets or whatever, and also marks them on your map for you. Very useful if you don't have these memorized by heart, or you just have a lot of characters that you tend to lose track of. Incursions pop up every 19 hours like I mentioned, but unfortunately there's no in-game timer to let you know exactly when. Inevitably, they'll start and end during the wee hours of the morning, which sucks, but you can keep track of them on the game info website, here you'll get a handy timer for both US and European servers, so you're never guessing when they're about to start. I'll have it linked in the description. From doing these incursions, and also those Warfront World Quests, you'll receive another currency called Service Medals. These can be spent at a vendor in your main city at these coordinates, and for 300 of them, you can get an eye level 395 ring, so it's a nice option if you don't care about the other stuff, such as mounts or whatever. And another option for gearing up are the weekly quests. In your adventure log, there should be a section for the weekly bonus event, which when clicked gives you a quest. This can sometimes give you gear. As you can see, the time walking event gives a cache that'll have an eye level 385 piece of gear from the Battle of Dazzler lore. Sometimes though, it can be something lame, like pet battle leveling stones, 
so it's not the most reliable. And since I mentioned time walking, I may as well cover that really quickly here. When this is active, you can run some old dungeons from past expansions, and you'll be rewarded with some pretty good gear. As of this video, it's 365, which is great because you don't even need a minimum eye level to queue up for them, since your eye level is scaled down while you're inside anyways. I think these are probably the most bang for your buck for that initial gearing process because they're spammable infinitely as long as the event is active. The only downside is that any head, shoulder, chest, or amulet drops will be essentially useless since those are of course your Azurite armor slots. But as an added bonus, you can even buy some pieces from the vendors. At the end of your first run, you should get a quest starter which leads to the relevant vendor. It's different for each event, and here you can spend some of your time warped badges on even more gear, so definitely keep an eye out for these and take advantage if you see them active. And I also wanted to mention War Mode. PvP has changed quite a bit this expansion. Instead of dedicated PvE or PvP servers, you now just enable or disable PvP mode in your talents menu. It's called War Mode, and when it's active, you can attack and be attacked by enemy players. Why would you do this, you're asking? Well, to crush some horde scum first off, but you also get more rewards for having it on. This will change over time, but right now, since the Alliance are outnumbered, they get a 15% bonus to any currency-based reward from world quests, and the horde get the minimum, which is just 10%. Whether it's gold, azurite, reputation, war resources, whatever. This does add up quite a bit, and if you like PvP, it's a no-brainer. You also get access to some PvP talents, which increases your power overall, and it even provides a bonus to XP gained, so it's also an option for leveling your alts more quickly. Just thought I'd let you know. A little added benefit for more risk. If your faction is vastly outnumbered, you do get an additional weekly quest called Against All Odds. You get it near your mission table, and if you activate war mode and kill 25 people out in the world, you get an eye level 400 cash as of this video, which is quite nice, so that's even more reason to be in PvP mode. But that's about it I guess. At the end of the day, just have fun with it. I know this is kind of counterintuitive to the video, but it's really not a race. I hope that this video sort of gave you a general idea of all the different things that you can do, and good luck in your adventures. Like the video if you liked it, and thanks for watching. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.